Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Madhya Sahi from Department of Zoology, Bank Road Campus, UE Lahore. So students, today we are going to study about taxonomic procedures. As you know, the taxonomy is to uh, classify the things, especially organisms, into different classifications, into different categories. So uh, the first step in the taxonomic procedures is the definitely is the collection of the specimens so uh, today we'll focus on the taxonomic collections okay once uh, the very very first step in the taxonomic studies is the collection of materials or the collection of specimens uh, the specimen word uh, you have heard a lot it, it means sample Right, uh, I think you have heard a lot about the specimen or sample of the blood, sample of the tissue. So, in case of taxonomy, specimens represents or refers to the organism or part of the organism that is representing its own species. So, the very first and very important step in taxonomic study is the collection of specimen. But in order to start the taxonomic study, once you have a taxonomist have planned to collect the specimen, so he should not collect the specimen from a single particular area. To collect the specimen, you can you should visit uh, as much as localities as possible. Why? Because if uh, you are collecting your specimen or your samples from the diverse localities, then it will give your if it will give you good results. But if you are, suppose I am a taxonomist, right? I have planned to uh, collect the sample of or collect the specimen of butterfly. If I visit a very small area and I collect my specimen, uh, but uh, so, so what happened? What happened? That the specimens from the other area or other localities, the butterflies of the other area may belong to the same species to my specimen. But uh, because of the different habitats, they show the different morph morphology. They show the variation so it will lead or it will uh, pose the problem in uh, taxonomy studies in taxonomic collections and it will finally and ultimately lead to the uh, improper assessment of the taxa or improper assessment of the classification of that particular specimen which i have collected from a very limited area so for the taxonomic collection one taxonomist should uh, visit or should collect his specimens from as di much diverse uh, diverse localities as he can uh, seasonal variation variation in the developmental stages host parasite relationship etc should all be taken into account while collecting the specimen for studies this is very very important as uh, uh, we have studied in our previous lecture about the variations so uh, while collecting the specimens the variations or different variations should be kept in mind Okay, students, as I told you that the very important step in the taxonomic studies is the collection. So, uh, there are different methods that a uh, taxonomist could adopt. Uh, first of all, uh, when he is uh, collecting the specimen uh, from a particular area, uh, what should he do? That he should collect the specimens of the related group as well. <clears throat> what happened? Because related group specimens are also available when you are looking for your own specimen. Now, what happened from this? You can give this related group specimen to an other specialist who is working on it. Uh, this will help you. Uh, you can give this specimen to the other taxonomist as a loan or you can mutually exchange your specimens, right? Uh, he will give you your specimen if he has and uh, you will uh, you are giving his specimen uh, so this will be in this way both the taxonomists would be benefited uh, secondly uh, once you are planning to uh, look for the specimen or to have a specimen uh, to go for searching the specimens uh, a Taxonomists should focus on those areas first that are uh, more vulnerable to the destruction or to the damage because what happened uh, if uh, the area will become completely damaged or destroyed then all the organisms including plants and animals that is fauna and flora of that particular area uh, would be destroyed and uh, they become extinct so before their extinction or before their damage 
it is very important that they should be collected by the taxonomist so so first priority of the taxonomist should be those areas that are uh, going to be destroyed or going to be destructed um, either because of the flood or because of other environmental factors where and how to collect the choice of collecting stations should be planned carefully now if you are working on the variations especially geographic variations the variations of the organisms that are due to their geographical distances or that are due to their geographical um, relationship or their environment uh, where two steps should be uh, taken into mind one is all the material already available in collection should be assembled and analyzed before uh, working on the geographic variations uh, a taxonomist should collect all the already available material and analyze it now what will happen and uh, this will help you to uh, uh, study the further variations that are being present in that particular group or that particular population that particular species uh, now uh, the filling of the crucial gaps just shown will be the goal of all subsequent collections now what happened after the study of the uh, already pre-assembled um, collections uh, what will happen a taxonomy will get to know about the gaps that are present in the collection so he will uh, go for the uh, those uh, he will go for those species that fulfill the uh, these gaps he will go for those collections uh, now uh, if species show noticeable geographic variation the collection should cover the range of all the subspecies subspecies is the rank that comes under the rank of the uh, species in the taxonomy and definitely if you are going for the geographic variations then you should collect almost uh, your collection should be so wide that you uh, can uh, fill the gaps and you can cover the range of all the subspecies if species show seasonal variation now in case of seasonal variation what happen uh, you have to be focused on in the particular season for the collection of the specimen uh, collection should be made in various seasons in many invertebrates the season during which sexual maturity occurs is very short okay so in that season in at that uh, short time period collection should be made okay collections should be made uh, at that time when the specimens or organisms are present in their best condition for example if we uh, talk about the birds uh, birds shed their plumage they undergo uh, through, through the process of molting they shed their feathers as the season changes uh, suppose from summer to winter they shed their feathers and they got the new plumage of lighter color of white color so collection of that particular specimen of bird uh, birds should not be made at that time uh, it should be made after the birds have completed their molt and uh, if we talk about uh, um, insects then we can say that same for the insect the collection of insects should be made at that time when they completed their ecdysis or their molting means they come when they completed their shedding of the cuticle uh, if species wears or bleeds collections should be made at the time when specimens are in their best condition in birds for instance after they have completed their molt wears or bleach means when um, means that when species are damaged somewhat collection should not be made collection should always be made at the best condition of the specimen uh, as we talked about the insects insects for example has gone through many uh, life cycles or many different stages of their life cycle uh, during metamorphosis uh, pupa stage larval stage so collection should be made for such kind of organisms that have the different life stages of the life cycles collection should be made at all the stages of their life cycle okay uh, the next step in the taxonomic collection is the labeling labeling is a very again very important step because without label your specimen is of no use uh, without accurate label the specimen will be worthless uh, for labeling what things should be um, involved or incorporated in uh, the labeling of the specimen first of all the locality the locality from where you have taken your sample or your specimen you have to mention that locality or that area in in your label but uh, besides locality you have to add 
get all the information related to that locality uh, for example you have to add the altitude of that locality that how much uh, its height from the sea level you have to add the latitude you have to add the longitude of that particular locality latitude is the uh, angular measurements actually these are the measurements of the area from the um, equator of the earth equator is uh, you know the imaginary line that uh, surrounds the center of the earth so if we talk about the longitude then it is the angular distance from of east to west and if we talk about the latitude then it is the um, angular distance of uh, uh, angular distance of north and south with the equator so we have to add all this information of the locality in our label of the specimen uh, second we have to add the status of the habitat that what kind of the habitat either it was a disturbed habitat or it was undisturbed normal habitat or either uh, type of the vegetation if we talk about the animals then we have to add the uh, type of the vegetations or type of the plants that are present in that particular locality from where we are collecting our specimen because uh, most probably the sp our specimen will um, our specimens are fed on uh, that vegetation that are present in the that particular locality so type of vegetation must be the part of the labeling um, third is the type of the host if we talk about the parasites as you know parasites uh, resides uh, in someone's uh, so we need to add the type of the host in case of parasites if uh, our specimen is parasite then we have to add in our label the type of the host as well so uh, next uh, we are talking about the temporary labels now uh, what are the temporary labels if I am uh, collecting the specimen, uh, if I am collecting my sample uh, from the field, so uh, for the time being, I have to make the temporary labels. Why temporary labels? Because uh, when I am collecting too many uh, specimens, maybe later in my lab, I will uh, there is a chance of error that I will mix it up. So uh, to avoid the error, we have to make the temporary labels. So temporary labels can be written in the field itself and these can be replaced by permanent labels in the laboratory. However, care must be taken while changing the label since it is likely to cause errors, right? Um, the next, uh, the exact name of the locality is very important. This is what I told you previously as well. Okay, how the exact name of the locality should be done on the labeling. Uh, this is one of the example or you can say this is one of the sample of the uh, locality name in the labeling. Uh, there are many other ways also present to write the locality in the labeling uh, in a taxonomy, in the field of taxonomy. So let's take this example. If the locality is Muthanga, an area of Vyanat Wildlife Sanctuary in Kerala. Uh, the collector is TC Narendan and date of collection is 2nd June 2019. So it can be written like this. Here you can see that uh, the country name would be written in uh, caps lock in capital India. Its area was which? Kerala. Vyanod was the district and uh, locality name was the Muthanga and collector TC Narendan 2nd june june is a six month so it is written in roman here and the year is the 2019 all right uh, this is what we can uh, write the locality name exactly but this is again this is one of the methods there are many other methods are also available in taxonomy to write the locality and to write the collector's name as well okay if the locality from where you are taking your specimen is very small or uh, it is not well known locality uh, it is uh, not found commercially so uh, what should be done you have to add the name of the locality but as well as you have to add the important landmark of uh, that is present near that uh, uh, particular locality you have to add that so uh, what you have to do you have to add the name of the locality and its position relative to a well-known place should be added on the label um, like uh, you are telling if you are telling your uh, home address to someone or your university address to someone especially home address so while um, telling the address you always add a nearby landmark right 
that is nearby to your home same uh, would happen in the case of the labeling and uh, that if the locality is not well known what we do we add the uh, nearby known place to in, into the label with the with the place with the name of the that locality so in addition to locality other data is also needed on the label for example if we talk about the plants uh, then uh, sometimes taxonomics add the uh, they record the sex of the specimen and they uh, measures the actual size of the gonad gonads you know the reproductive organs they add these sizes on the label as well as a degree of ossification of the skull why ossification of the skull is important because in this way we can determine the age of our specimen and uh, now what is ossification ossification is actually the remodeling of the bones uh osteoblasts are being added on the bones uh, to make them grow and to make them new so how much uh, new cells have been added to the skull or how much what is the degree of ossification from which we came to know that uh, what is the age of the of our specimen and weight is also important weight should be mentioned in grams mostly now uh, after collection and then labeling the next step is the preservation and curation of the collections well it is the duty of the taxonomist it is his duty that he has to preserve his collection he has to preserve his specimen as well as he has to curate his specimen preserve you know uh, for further studies and he should curate his specimen that uh, he is responsible for his specimens uh, that it may not be theft or it may not get lost uh, from uh, where he has placed the specimen so it is the duty of the taxonomist to preserve and as well as to take care and look after his specimens or his collections so for repositories and museums uh, this what I was talking about uh, uh, particular single taxonomist when he is studying on something that it is his duty to keep that something um, with great care but if we talk about the repositories or museum repositories mean the area where uh, the uh, massive data has been collected so in case of repositories and mu museums special curators uh, will be there to look after the collections uh, like uh, curators are like custodians they uh, their duty is to clean the collections is to look after the collection uh, is to protect the collection this is in case of museum this is the duty of the curators this uh, in museums uh, taxonomist is not responsible but the museum curators are the responsible or museum keepers are the responsibles like in many buildings in many offices we keep the custodians we keep the curators uh, that look after the building and building specimens so in case of uh, museums uh, same curators will be hired or are hired to take care of the collections uh, now uh, preservation you know is very important because uh, uh, preservation of specimen is gaining more and more important since they serve as a kind of exito conservation when we think that some kind of species is gonna extinct soon so we need to collect the specimen of those uh, species and we need to conserve them or preserve them because they will provide the exito conservation for that extinct species exito uh, conservation means the same uh, like if we talk about the wildlife uh, if we think that lion or tiger elephant species are going to be extinct so we take that uh, to the zoo for example so zoo is what zoo is the exito conservation area the species that is not uh, present in its original geographic area but we have preserved it somewhere else so this what is called exito conservation just to make them conserved so they couldn't be extinct right since more and more species are becoming extinct these preserved collections will serve as relics to study the species that one existed definitely when species got exist extinct from the world so what happened that these conserved species uh, which we have conserved ex situ will provide as a part or as a sample relics mean the same as a part or as a sample of the those species that uh, was once existed in this world 
okay the methods of pre uh, preservation and curation differ from group and uh, group to group uh, we never uh, preserve insects in 100% uh, alcohol uh, alcohol volume should be very less because they make the insects dry and the dried specimens wouldn't be of use they will be worthless uh, some insects are pinned and uh, uh, wings are spread if they are taxonomically important here i have given you the picture these are the different sizes pins available for the preservation of the insects and uh, like uh, butterfly moths uh, some species of grasshopper also pinned like here you can see the spread wings of the insect so uh, some invertebrates that are preserved uh, invertebrates could be preserved in um, that are preserved in formalin are very uh, much perfect for study so the method of the preservation uh, differs from group to group okay so far we have talked about the collections or taxonomic collections then how and where to collect uh, our specimens then we uh, discussed about the labeling um, including temporary labels then we talked about the preservation and curation of our collections now next step is cataloging the collection now cat now cataloging is important why when we are uh, we have preserved the specimens now uh, we are going to place these specimens in particular museum or repository so we need to catalog them what is cataloging cataloging is uh, make a list of items uh, right so uh, cataloging done in any case in any store in any repository um, besides the taxonomy cataloging is a common practice uh, when you have a large amount of items so you need to catalog them you need to arrange them uh, into a card or uh, you make a list of uh, that items and you give them special numbers so what is cataloging cataloging is a process by which all the parts of a specimen are linked to the information associated with them through a unique identifying number now this identifying number is very important this is known as the catalog number uh, by which number we can access the particular item or particular specimen depending on the group of organism again uh, which uh, kind of species we are talking about which kind of group we are talking about either they are insects either they are parasites either they are, either they are plants either they are uh, invertebrates they are vertebrates the cataloging is uh, always differ for uh, it differs specimen to specimen or it differs uh, group to group uh, for example in higher vertebrates an individual number will be given to each specimen because in higher vertebrate the specimen is itself is a very large so we give a particular individual number to that each specimen and all the related information about that specimen will be given in the uh, card which will be filled in the catalog card in card catalog okay here i have used the different spellings of uh, catalog like here i have used u and here not so this is not the problem this is the difference between the american and the british english you know that some uh, american in american english u is not important but in british we use u okay in case of taxonomy uh, cataloging is usually done geographically uh, cataloging usually done geographically that is all specimens collected at the given locality or district in a given period of time or by one expedition are entered in the catalog together so now what does it mean that if i i have gone uh, to the traveling or uh, to search the specimen uh, so whatever i got during that my expedition i will uh, catalog their specimens together in a single uh, together in a single catalog card or single catalog number so cataloging is usually done geographically so specimens uh, are collected from a same area those specimens that have been collected from a uh, given uh, area given locality at the same time would be uh, cataloged together all right this is one of the uh, way to catalog the things now this is done after authentically identifying specimens now cataloging is uh, always done after the identification of the specimen once specimen has been identified that uh, it has been taxonomically classified to its genus and species level so then it will be cataloged okay otherwise it will uh, remain under the studies remain under the study uh, of the taxonomy
uh, in groups where large numbers uh, in the previous slide I talked about that uh, we can catalog the uh, specimens uh, on the basis of their groups uh, higher vertebrates are cat uh, are cataloged separately each of the catalog number or accession number would be given to each specimen but in case of small specimens uh, we uh, it is not uh, practicable to give a uh, particular each number to every specimen but what we do we give uh, the each number to a group of the collections uh, like here I have written in groups where large number of specimens are present it is not very practicable to catalog each specimen right in the case of insects and similar groups each number will be allotted to each set of collections all right each number will be allotted to each group of collections each set of collection not individual specimen consisting of a set of specimens from the given locality or the area the collections are usually arranged according to latest accepted classification science changes every day right so uh, what we do we catalog the collection according to the latest acceptable classification not the prior one the latest classification of the taxonomy uh, the authentic classification which is latest and acceptable classification we arrange the our uh, um, specimens according to that so unidentified uh, what happened the unidentified specimens could be kept separately they are not be uh, the part of the catalog uh, uh, they are not they won't be part of our catalogs okay here is the example of the vertebrates cataloging uh, what items or what important uh, things that should be the part of the catalog number one is the museum accession number uh, in case of vertebrates especially in high, higher vertebrates we give uh, each specimen to a particular number so this is the that number that we need to access to our uh, specimen this is uh, the museum accession number or the catalog number uh, second original field number is also very important it is also required scientific name of that particular specimen should be written um, while uh, cataloging the specimen sex of the specimen either it is a male female or intersex whatever so exact locality exact locality name should be mentioned from where it has been collected and the date of uh, its collection collector name that who uh, collect this specimen particular particularly and then the remarks of the uh, remarks on the uh, collection or on the specimen should be the part of the catalog of that particular till now uh, we are generally talking about the collections now the collections are further uh, also divided into different types uh, we will discuss these types one by one uh, number one is the survey collection survey collection uh, depends on the surveys it depends that we have taken into account a particular group of um, group that we want to survey on that right uh, again I have taken the example of uh, butterfly right uh, if we want to uh, study this group we want so we make a survey on this group uh, or a survey could also be depend on the geographical area so uh, it depends that uh, what group we have taken either we are working or either we are uh, making the survey on a particular group of uh, animals or organisms or we are working on the particular geographic area we want to explore all the groups that are present in that particular area so it depends and there are those collection would be called the survey collections uh, let's um, read this this is usually based on surveys of a particular group or a geographical area for studying biodiversity of a large group of a large area it is usually necessary to devote more time months or even years for making satisfactory collection of the specimens so here I have given one example for instance for studying the biodiversity of insects of Silent Valley National Park uh, if we want to discuss about the uh, diversity of the insects that are present in that particular area that is the Silent Valley National Park if we want to survey the insects uh, of the National Park then we 
what we do it is necessary to collect almost all the orders of the insects which are present in area and it will definitely it will take years to identify each specimen up to the species level so what we do in survey collection in survey collection first we decide that what we want to survey either we want to survey a particular area or either we want to survey for the particular group of organisms if we want to survey the particular area then we will go to the that area and we will look for all the biodiversity uh, suppose of insects uh, present in that area and it will take much time because once we have collected all the biodiversity then we have to identify all the biodiversity uh, up to uh, at least the species level generally the biodiversity worker will be having a list of specialist now uh, if you are going on a survey for the collection of the biodiversity you are not going alone but you have a list of specialists that will work with you so that your work will be prompt will be uh, quick and will be uh, more worthful generally the biodiversity work will be having a list of specialists working in each group because in bio if you are uh, uh, if you have selected the um, uh, survey of a particular area then you have why uh, do you need a specialist because you are a specialist in particular group but in um, studying the biodiversity you uh, need to take all other related groups as well so uh, the, uh, study the rest of the groups you need the rest of the specialist of those particular groups since the success of the survey uh, success of any survey depends on accurate and fairly prompt identification definitely your surveys for identification uh, so your success depend on the identification this is the most important part of the work here is the second type of collections that is collections for general exhibition now uh, collections that are meant for the general exhibition usually include the uh, large or big uh, specimens instead of the microscopic specimens microscopic specimens are never meant for the journal public ex uh, exhibition so uh, with the specimens that are uh, being collected or that are being displayed for uh, public uh, we have labeled them with both scientific names and uh, vernacular names vernacular names mean common names and usually we uh, used to display those specimens in the exhibition uh, that are either very large or that have some uh, morphological uh, description or difference with the other animals so uh, they would be more attractive to the visitors right <clears throat> let's read it several museum exhibit various types of animals and plants for general public each item is identified sometimes broadly classified okay uh, for general public the items are not uh, classified uh, too keenly but they are broadly classified we have given that uh, simple the kingdom name and the phylum name for the general public and labeled with both scientific and vernacular names scientific names will also be there and their common names will also be there the names which uh, we use in our common language uh, vernacular names are those names usually these exhibits may contain only morphological peculiar or rare or large specimens in exhibition uh, we like to see something that is very different or very unique so for exhibition only those collection are displayed that have morphologically peculiar means something different structures right uh, microscopic forms are not exhibited for journal public okay uh, third type of the uh, collection is a collection for the teaching students uh, these collection uh, most universities uh, kept the collections for uh, the teaching purpose for the graduate and postgraduate students uh, but these collections very limited uh, you cannot compare these collection to the repository collections right um, usually they uh, like to repair uh, yeah, usually they like to keep only one or two items of a particular family to teach their students so most university and colleges in underdeveloped or developed countries do not have trained curators well if they do not universities have uh, don't have the trained curators or trained attendants for the uh, specimens so ultimately what happen ultimately all the specimens will be dried and because of the lack of the proper care Mm, like in some universities they are not uh, uh, there are not proper attendants for the uh, curation of the specimens so what happen uh, in these cases these collections uh, will be refilled by the students each year as a part of their curriculum work uh, 
because it were it is their assignment to collect the specimens um, and to uh, preserve them so in this way these collections uh, would be uh, replenished okay next kind of the uh, collection is the identification collections uh, now these are the those collections uh, that are met accidentally uh, sometimes the officials are working or taxonomists are working on their own uh, group of uh, uh, specimens but what happen in that group they may uh, counter with a new organism a new un uh, unintroduced organism so uh, those specimens would be the identification specimens or identification collections uh, in quarantine stations the officials uh, then come across emigrant or uh, accidentally introduced organism emigrant means the species that is not uh, uh, inhabitant of that particular area including most insects and um, some plants so to find out the identity of uh, this intercepted organism what will happen uh, they call on for the uh, specialist and uh, then they do this task because they are working on their own groups so they need other specialists to uh, find the identity of that uh, species that have been introduced accidentally uh, some federal and state agencies found it necessary to set up centers for identification of insects because identification of insects is very very intolerable because why because of their tremendous number insects are present in tremendous number or diverse number of species there are too many insects. so to find out their identifications uh, government uh, some uh, in some areas government has uh, uh, made the setup for the identification of the insects and there are two important uh, necessary uh, steps should be there an educate library should be present and a representative reference collection should be there when there is a representative reference collection then it would be easy to identify the identification collections means the uh, unintroduced introduced specimens okay the fifth type of the collection is the research collections uh, research collection one of the most important collection uh, collections because uh, they provide the a uh, very important point or focal point for the taxonomic studies or taxonomic researches uh, so these kind of uh, uh, collections or specimens should be of very highest and finest type and obviously for that they should be prepared and preserved with great care uh, these collections are very important uh, not only for the taxonomist that is associated with the particular museum uh, but it is also very important for the other institutions because the, uh, these are the those collections that mostly the uh, two institution can uh, mutual exchange or they can uh, take and give or this on loan uh, on a loan uh, in the way of the loan so these collection are of great value not only to the museum taxonomist but also for the other taxonomists of other institutions since the latter can get these collections on loan now uh, these collection where uh, they must be kept they could be uh, under the custody of the taxonomist it depends on the taxonomist or they could be kept in private institutions in public institutions or in any university museum the sixth type of the uh, collection or kind of the collection or specimens is the type collection uh, type collection is the very important uh, kind of the collection because type col collection is the physical evidence of particular organism a uh, type collection is a specimen of an organism to which a scientific name of that organism is attached or you could also say that uh, type is uh, collection or type specimen is that specimen uh, on which we define the feature of particular taxon so uh, these uh, uh, collections are much more important a new species is described based on a type specimen or the specimens the type should be kept and curated with utmost care uh, when uh, whenever a doubt arises regarding the identity of a species or genus examination of the type is necessary to confirm its real identity so these type of specimens are very important and uh, they should be uh, preserved and curated very well why uh, for example uh, in during the second world war when uh, german attacks air force uh, attacks the europe there is repositories uh, the type 
uh, specimens that are present in the repositories of the Europe that have been transferred before the bombing to the underground cells just to keep their types preserved and just to keep their types protected. All holotypes, lectotypes, neotypes, uh, these all uh, uh, types should be preserved because they cannot be replaced. The types should be numbered individually and they should be kept as a, uh, as a separate collection in order to get special attention and uh, they should be uh, facilitated for rapid transfer uh, in case of emergency. This is what I told you in your previous slide. I gave the example of the Second World War. So uh, types are customarily deposited in large collections. Where they are deposited in large collections and that repository or that institution is known as the standard type repository where the large collections of the types are being deposited. Uh, in most uh, repositories, if we talk about, they are cataloged alphabetically according to the genus and the species in case of invertebrates such as insects. And a card index by genera and other species are provided in order to save time in searching for the required type. This is what you know already that cataloging is important uh, for the rapid accession to the particular specimen or particular kind of the specimen. Seventh type of the uh, collection is the damaged collections or damaged specimens. So um, we could have the damaged collection because the damage has been occurred uh, due to improper preservation processes or uh, if the specimens are not uh, being look, uh, looked after by the creators very well. So uh, there is a debate that whether the repository or the museum should keep these damaged collections uh, or uh, it's better to off these collections uh, from the repositories or the museums. Uh, well, the best way to remove the useless specimen will be to request a specialist who is working on that particular uh, group will remove uh, when he or she revises the group. Uh, well, there is another point of view. Some uh, people think or some taxonomists think that uh, the damaged uh, specimens should be kept uh, in the museums. Why? Because uh, whether it will prove useful one day when more and more techniques are developed to study the such specimens in future. So uh, there is no harm in keeping the damaged collections as well in the museum or taxonomic repositories. Uh, so far we have discussed the different types of collections. Uh, now it is the exchange of collections. Uh, this happens this happens because uh, uh, collections are mostly exchanged uh, between the countries. Sometimes the foreign country is not accessible to every taxonomist so uh, the different countries exchange their collections uh, with uh, with each other. In order to build up a good collection of different groups, exchanges of specimens between museums and between specialists can be helpful. Sometimes what happens, the taxonomists have more than one uh, specimen of the same group. So uh, he may uh, return or he may uh, give the, this specimen as a mark of gratitude or as a gift to the uh, uh, on the cooperation to the museums or other institutions. So exchange of collection is a very a good step in taxonomic procedures and uh, it will help to build up a very good collection of different groups. Students, let's, uh, let's recapitulate our lecture or let's summarize our today's lecture. It was about the taxonomic collections. So first of all we talked about the methods of collection then where and how to collect from where we have to collect we have to select the group we have to uh, choose the uh, diverse geographical area or diverse localities then after the collection we come to the labeling of the collection uh, first of all we made temporary labels then we uh, replace the temporary labels by the permanent labels in our lab temporary labels are made in the field in order to avoid the error uh, next, uh, we uh, go to the preservation and curation of the collection after being labeled. The uh, after being labeled, the collections or specimens should be preserved with high care and should be looked after. Uh, then, uh, in museums and repositories where large amount of specimens are there. Uh, we go for the cataloging the specimens and on the basis of basically on their geographical basis. 
and then kinds of collection we come to the different kinds of collection including survey collection damage collections type collections collections for the uh, teaching students so uh, next and last we talked about the exchange of collection that it is very good thing in taxonomy because it will help to make your collection at a very good level to exchange bit exchange could be done between the institutions exchange could be done between the countries also okay students thank you so much and have a nice day great day today